Hey, welcome back. We have some exciting news coming out of the U.S. Navy. We have, in a very short time, and I'm talking like this year, significantly increased the offensive capability of all of our surface combatants that have the Mark 41 VLS system, which is the majority of them. We're going to get into that in just a second. But first, I need to say a big congratulations to the officers and crew of the USS Leyte Golf. She has returned home from her final deployment and has a 40-some year history of service to this nation, uh, spanning the careers of many sailors. Some of you watching this have probably served on her. Feel free to add your stories to the comments below. Uh, this is a ship that is highly awarded and distinguished. Uh, it's kind of sad to see her go, I mean, because she is from my generation of the Navy, but we are all aging out, and it is her turn, and she's doing so uh, with pride and honor. So, uh, congratulations. Uh, she will be decommissioned now. This is a Ticonderoga class cruiser. These are the cruisers the navies have been trying to decommission for cost savings for years now, and it is happening. And it is the right time, in my opinion, because we need to take that money and push it into new systems that are of the 21st century. Um, but before we go into our real story today, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody that served on board that kept these ships going decade after decade, especially recently when it's more and more difficult. Uh, to keep them operational. Uh, you guys all did a great job. And uh, another Ticonderoga class cruiser is going to be retired very soon. Now, the big news coming out of Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and the U.S. Navy is that they're ramping up the defensive capabilities by integrating the Patriot Advanced Capability 3 missile onto the Mark 41 VLS system on board many of our ships that also use the Aegis combat system. If it has both those systems, it can now fire the Patriot missile, essentially. Uh, so the Patriot missile has been battle tested, especially recently, over and over again. Uh, it is very accurate. Much It is as accurate as everybody said it was. There were a lot of people wondering, and there were naysayers going, there's no way it's that good. And then its uh, first deployment in the original Gulf War 1991 was hit and miss, literally. But this generation of Patriot missile, some 30 years later is extremely accurate and long range and relatively small compared to the SM6s and even the SM2s that are on board US ships today. So the Pac-3 has a very high uh, hit to kill ratio. It's designed to intercept ballistic missiles out to over 20 miles and advanced fighters closer to 100 miles. It has a wide range of capabilities in just one missile. It stands out with the improved Aegis radar, like the baseline 10 that we have, that can, tr can track hundreds of targets at the same time while engaging them with a large variety of missiles, whether it's the SM-2, the SM-6, and now the Pac-3. This is an awesome development because we don't need to build new ships. We don't need to build new systems. We already have the Patriot. We've had it for years. We've had the Aegis for years, and now we're marrying them together like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's just wonderful. It's a it's a great thing. It's a great marriage right there. I love the... That's awesome. Yeah. I could say it's like an Oreo cookie, but then a biscuit would probably come after me. I could say it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup, but then... Whoever the hell owns Reese's would come after me. Uh, who owns peanut butter and jelly time? You know the song. Anyway, it's a great marriage of technologies that we already have, so we don't need significant lead time and development. Uh, we, there's a small amount of development of integration, getting them on board the ships, of course, but the first successful test from a land-based uh, facility, this was an actual missile launch, not a simulation, of the Pac-3 using Aegis guidance and Aegis radar to guide it to target was successful. So the next logical step is to do that same test at sea. There's no reason why the at sea test won't work as well as the one on landed, but they still need to do it. Once that's done, we're going to see pack threes rolling out into the U.S. Navy, I think, quite quickly. I think by the end of this year is what I'm thinking is going to happen. So what is what does this mean? Well, in a recent interview that is fantastic by the Center of Strategic and International Studies, they asked Rear Admiral Fred Pyle to come in for about an hour long talk about many different things, including this system. And according to Admiral Pyle, the US Navy can dual and quad pack Patriot Pack 3s into one VLS cell. That is key. That is the big, uh, one of the two big things about this missile that's so good is that you can have a four to one ratio per uh, VLS cell. So, each 
Arleigh Burke has 96 VLS cells. Uh, that means it can carry 96 missiles unless it's an ESSM, which is a short range point defense missile for defending the ship that is a quad pack. Well, now we can quad pack a Patriot missile into that same VLS cell and have range is close to 100 miles, shooting down aircraft cruise missiles and ballistic missiles at a range of about 20 miles. Four of those per VLS versus one missile per VLS. And so what was a point defense missile, the ESSM, could easily be replaced with a much longer Patriot missile system. Or you could replace one SSM-2 missile, Block 3 Alpha, for example, with four Patriot missiles and shoot down four different targets. This is going to give uh, ships like the Arleigh Burke, much longer time on station. They won't need to come back for reloads as often. These are all lessons learned that we've learned really from the Red Sea, but also the Ukraine war, where we don't have enough missiles. This should not be a shock to anybody, but it was because they're expensive and nobody wants to pay for a bunch of missiles we're not going to need. Now we have evidence. We have the Red Sea and we have this war in Ukraine where stocks are depleting at a rate that we're not replacing. So we know that we need to ramp up uh, munitions production, which is what the United States is doing. Now, that is another huge benefit to the uh, Patriot system is right now in Camden, Arkansas, those guys down there are going to town. They are building 550 Patriot missiles a year. They're cranking them out, multiple a day. And the standard missiles are somewhere between 100 and 150 a year. So we have like five times more production of the Patriot missiles than we do the standard missiles, whether it's standard two, standard six, we're getting about 100. Now, we are ramping up the standard missile production to 200. That's in progress, but it hasn't happened yet. We're already at 550 a year of the Patriot. So we have a lot more capability to make more of them. And so we're going to begin to using them on board the USS, on board the US Navy ships as well. Of course, the Army's still going to get some too. I'm sure, I wonder what the Army thinks of this. Like the, the Army's been buying our tomahawks for years. I think we could have a couple Patriots. Okay, Army, calm down. Calm thyself. Anyway, great news. Uh, so like the early Burke with 96 VLS could have just under 400 missiles on board. But in reality, that's not going to be how they deploy. They're still going to have the SM-2, which cost only half a million dollars each approximately. Uh, the, the Patriot cost $3 million. So it's still not a bargain. But that SM-6, which is the most versatile and capable and long range missile in the United States Navy, that thing costs $5 million a pop. It's very expensive, but it also does everything. It shoots down ballistic missiles at a much longer range than the uh, than the Patriot does, but you can also configure it to uh, engage a surface ship. Now, if you want to use a $5 million to destroy a surface ship, that had better be an expensive surface ship because it's likely that that missile costs more than that ship does. You know, we're always on the wrong side of this cost to kill ratio. But when you add the value of the ship that you're defending, whether it's shipping or own ship, obviously uh, that's where the value comes in using that missile. We don't need to get into that topic. The point is uh, the Patriot is not a bargain by price. It is a bargain in that we're already making five times more of them than the standard missile, and we can fit four times as many per VLS in each VLS cell across the Navy. That is a significant, nearly overnight, within one year, increase of our naval capability. It is, this is huge, huge news. And I'm so glad that I didn't even know about this program until like this week. This is brand new to me. It's been in development for a long time, but with this successful test just this month uh, by Lockheed Martin and Raytheon working together. Hey, it's Aaron from the future here. The Raytheon part of the Patriot missile is its low cost guidance system. The missile is still built and assembled by Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin was doing the test because I believe they, are, uh, <clears throat> they have won the test facility and the Aegis radar uh, that they use to guide the Patriot. Anyway, it all came together. It was, it's a, it's a great meshing of, uh, technology and capability, and we don't need to build and design new ships to employ it. We already have them in the fleet. It's just great. And if you want to know more about upcoming naval technology and capability, watch this video right here.